Rob Tebbett here for Boxing News. Delighted to be joined by the new WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Chris Billum Smith. How did that sound, Chris? Yeah, it sounds it's still a bit mad, mate. To be honest, it sounds fantastic. Um yeah, just crazy. Crazy. I'm just gonna get take some getting used to. I can imagine, and just like to start this interview by saying it is seven minutes to five in the morning uh the day after your fight with Lawrence Acoli uh, at your beloved Bournemouth Stadium uh the place that you've had a season ticket for however many years and you've now won a world title there if you can try and sum up tonight honestly I wish I could I wish I could sum it up but um no nah, it was I've I feel like I need to watch it back to appreciate it because I really tonight I was really in the zone and focused and just focused on the task at hand and that's what I've been saying all week at times I've had a little thought about the magic of it all and then um, just tried to but you know say that on fight night I'll be very focused and on the task at hand and I was tonight um, you know throughout it wasn't about where it was or anything it was just about one man in the other corner um, and yeah it was it was hard to fully soak it all in the ring walk I was kind of appreciating it but um, yeah it was um, a it was a special special ring walk and the crowd were obviously amazing as always you mentioned uh, the man in the other corner of course your former stable mate friend uh, not former friend current friend Lawrence Acoli. Um you shared 300 plus rounds with him as well documented in the build up to this how did the 12 rounds tonight compare to the previous 300 or so that you'd shared in the gym yeah no um, got a lot more cuts this, this <laughs> time than uh, it compared to the rest of the rounds that's for sure um, yeah uh, I'd never dropped Lawrence before either you know in, in sparring or anything so uh, there was there was there was that tonight obviously uh, Shane never took any points off him for holding <laughs> but no um, it was it was an honour to share the ring with Lawrence I've I've genuinely been you know obviously apart from when he was in the gym changing him since like 2016 because I was going in the ABAs he was number one seed and then they took him out because he qualified for the Olympics and then um, but there's no way I would have beaten him then I don't think um, and I think this is sort of the only uh, the only time I, w I would have beaten him you know b before this point um, is, is when he left the gym and this camp I've had it's been an amazing camp Um yeah, and it's uh, he's a, he's a good lad. Uh, he, it's nice to to win a world title off off a champion. I've always wanted to do it that way, and um, I think anyone does. So yeah, no, he was um, he's he's a, he's a good lad. First three rounds of the fight, I think. Um, for, for your room. Uh, so that's what I meant. He's got it. Yeah, it's one of those. Cool. Pick it up there. Rudely interrupted by your trainer, Shane McGuigan. Um, the first three rounds of the fight, I think you kind of the universal feeling is that Lawrence won those rounds, won those early rounds of the fight. Um, before we talk about the fourth round, where ultimately you, you, you kind of turn the tide, if you want to call it as such. Talk about those first three rounds and, and what the game plan was in those first three rounds, Al. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, look the, the game plan was to stay safe, stay safe and pick up the uh pick up the pace and the the my my work from rounds f four or five onwards depending how what was how Lawrence was doing but um you know for three rounds he's a, a very very dangerous man um he's a dangerous man throughout the fight but for three rounds very very dangerous you know um so we had to be clever and I just had to stay calm and I think I did that really really well um, I, I think I even had a thought to myself for, for a split second in there uh, maybe after the third round people thinking probably thinking I bottled this <laughs> um, like but I knew that we knew the game plan um, and, it, and that was always the game plan from Shane was stay safe you know for three or four rounds then start pressing it, you'll find the shots, you'll start making mistakes, um, and I'll be able to do what I needed to do. Um, so yeah, it was, I was very, very calm, um, and that was my best attribute tonight, I think, was keeping a cool head in all the situations, and um, from the ring walk 
but also during the fight as well and everything that happened. The knockdown in the fourth round, what are your memories of it? Yeah, I've had a chance to watch it back now, obviously. Um, you showed me it earlier, whilst we were waiting for a cab back from the stadium at about, what was that, about half two? Yeah, it was something like that. It was very um, late. So, yeah. No, um, yeah, I, I remember it was a, a left hook, and it's literally the, the shot I've envisioned all all camp, um, just the, the way the way I, I did it, um, sort of took, took when it coiled up inside and just let it go long because he, he dips off to his his um his right, um, but made a miss first. He threw a left at the body. I just sort of sweeped and then found the shot. So yeah, it's um. Yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, literally a shot that I've been been working on in camp with with Shaz and um, and and also visualizing myself. Were you surprised when he went down? Did it, what were you, what were you kind of the thoughts going through your mind at that moment? No, um, like I said, I can. I've said it in interviews before. I can. I believe I can knock anyone in the world out. Um, and I also, I've seen Lawrence dropped in the amateurs. Um and yeah, I just when he went down, I, I felt it land, and it was um yeah, and it went down and yeah, I think I was very calm and you were actually very, I think it would have been very easy a few fights ago to get super excited then, and think oh my god I'm three or four or five punches away from or another one punch like that away from winning a world title, but I just stay calm and focus on the on the task at hand and. I knew he was going to come in. I was trying to find another shot, but Lawrence is effective at what he does. And uh, yeah, he uh, he obviously held well, and I couldn't quite find it again. Um, the exact same shot. Um, but yeah, it was uh, not not a surprise. No. When you land that shot and he gets up, and the, the crowd, fifteen thousand of your people, you know, in the stadium that you have a season ticket at, and it's your stadium, your dream venue, are screaming and they're baying for blood. How difficult is it to stay in the moment, or is it very much kind of blockers on? Yeah, exactly. That blockers are on, and it's um, it's never over until until it's over, as they say. But um, I think was just very focused on on the task at hand and I think I the whole build up I was doing that I was visualizing staying focused with everyone screaming and it all going mental etc but um but no um I sort of looked at Shane and he was like stay calm drop back punch blah 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 because he's going to come in and hold uh, and there was a lot, a lot of time left in the round so he did well to survive because um you know he was hurt a lot of holding in the fight, of course. Uh, two points deducted from Lawrence Acoli. Were you expecting that? Is it something that you'd prepared for? And, and do you feel that it was justified from the referee? Yeah, I think so. I think yes to all of it. I think I was prepared for it and expecting it. Um, probably could have minimised it a bit, not, a bit more with a bit more energy in my legs by dropping back, etc. But um, yeah, I think they were justified. I think there was enough warnings there and it wasn't like we were throwing punches and ending up in a clinch. It was a lot of time. It was literally just grabbing, grabbing hold without even a jab being thrown. Um, now and again, there was a jab and a grab, but a lot of time it was just a, just a grab. So, um, yeah, I think, I think they were justified. And I think there wasn't that many complaints. You know, I don't think about that from, from his corner, um, after as far as I know. So, um, Late on in the fight, you um, you, while scoring two knockdowns, you also had to to wear a few. Um, we can see by your good looks here uh, at five o'clock in the morning, you, you had to take some big shots from a from a massive puncher at the weight. Um, was that the hardest you've ever been hit as a pro? No, I don't think so. It's weird with Lawrence. I think I can see it maybe because I know him so well, and I just take the edge off. But I wasn't. I'd never felt buzzed in there or anything like that. I never felt out of sorts I always have my wits about me feel the weight of the shots sure but um, he yeah I, I always have my wits about me and yeah and um, I was I, I think I've probably been I've been hit cleaner and, and harder but um, you know Lawrence he was definitely heavy heavy handed but um, 
yeah, I didn't didn't feel too bad. Do you think he takes the rematch? He said afterwards, 100% I'm going to do it. But obviously, you know, it's very easy to say after the fact. We obviously never know kind of what fighters decide um, when they're kind of by themselves. But you know Lawrence very well. Do you think he takes the rematch? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, he's a proud man. He's a he's a you know he's a he's a winner at heart. Um, and I think that is it makes sense for him. Uh, and also, you know, why wouldn't you? You got a world title opportunity again. It's not like I've sparked him out clean. It was a messy fight at times. So I think a clear winner. Yes, I hurt him. Um, so yeah, I'd expect him to to want the rematch. Won't keep you too much longer. Obviously, it's very late, and you you, you had a fight tonight. Um, yeah, I've also got a flight in like seven hours. You've got time. a flight in less than seven hours. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, you, you've now headlined at Bournemouth Stadium. You've won a world title. Um, we spoke about it openly in in previous interviews that we've done over the years about you know there was a time where winning a Commonwealth title or a British title were kind of, you know, with respect, were sort of perceived to be at least your ceiling. You've now gone way above and beyond that and you've achieved your your dream that you set out to achieve. What's the next dream for Chris Billum Smith? What do you want to do now? I don't know yet. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the next dream is. Um, You know, I'd love, I guess Vegas. I'd love to fight in Vegas. Unfortunately, no American... uh, American cruiserweights world titles over there at the moment, but um, there was talk of a Mexican coming up to cruiserweight once who does what good tickets in Vegas. But uh, yeah, no, uh, I think Vegas would be you know another bucket list thing for me. Um, Mia said to me earlier that she'd never been to Vegas because I was like, let's go. I was like, Vegas, baby, and uh, yeah, she was like, I've never been to Vegas. Let's go. Um, so yeah. She, she's on board um, even though she watched about two rounds of the fight I think and uh, oh, but, uh, I think maybe yeah long term that would be, be the dream we spoke earlier this week and you were you know you were very kind of you about it particularly in the build up to this about not wanting to get ahead of yourself and it wasn't just enough to, to box at ball if you had to win and you know we spoke about motivating the, the, the next generation of boxers in the region and we saw tonight you know fighters from the south coast getting their opportunity on a big bill at sky sports appreciate it's very much uh fresh and you haven't kind of processed things but now you've done it you've become bournemouth's first world champion since freddie mills what does it mean to you in this moment you've done it now yeah it's mad to say to be able to say i've done it like in the ring after i think Obviously, with me, I was just looking at her on the floor, crying. You know what's just happened? Like, what what's just happened? And uh, yeah, it was a nice, nice to have that moment. Um, yeah, it's crazy to to think that, and you know, hopefully, it inspires you know kids to get in a boxing gym and look after themselves and learn the respect and discipline I did in the gym, which has helped get me to this stage. You know, with that respect and discipline. I think it was a massive part of getting me into the Murugan gym and being being a nice person and which is what boxing helped teach me and sort of really cement my dad and my mum's my sort of parenting. Um so I think yeah, it's uh it's mad to to be able to say you know, I've I've done it. Final one from me. Uh, you mentioned that your mum, your dad, of course, your lovely wife Mia, and your son Frank, who turned one yesterday. Um, big up, Frank. Big up, Frank. Every time. Um, what does it mean to you to be able to do that for your family, particularly with you know you touched on it very poignantly at the post-fight press conference that y- your mum's not been very well recently, um, and and you know preparing for a world title fight, preparing for anything, but preparing for a world title fight with with that on your mind can't be easy. Uh, you, you've sacrificed you've spent time away from, from your wife and your son what does it mean to you to, to do that for them yeah it means everything that's just more motivation I couldn't let them down and um, yeah my mum's always been uh, I'm where I get the the fight and the, the grit from is, is my mum she had breast cancer in 1998 as well then she had a stroke a couple of years ago she's got breast cancer again and she just fights for it with such a positive attitude it's just She's like told me about it and she's like, It's all right though, I'll get through it and it's like it's like that every time and she's um yeah, she's my hero. And then obviously you got little man who's just inspiration. Um 
and I kissed him goodbye earlier today at about midday, one o'clock, and said, Daddy's going to go win your world title, so uh, I'm buzzing for him to to see the belt in the morning, and um, yeah, before we go on holiday, try and get the belt out quickly, and before we rush off in, into the taxi to the airport. Um, yeah, my family, I mean, you know, um, yeah, it was, uh, my dad cried on my shoulder tonight, I think that's the first time that's ever happened. And he was very proud. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. Really nice indeed. Um, Okay, I'm going to leave the final word to you. What message do you have? I asked you earlier this week a message for your beloved Bournemouth faithful. You've done it now. So what message does the new WBO Cruiserweight World Champion have to his adoring Bournemouth fan base? Uh, Yeah, a huge thank you to, uh, to all the fans that turned out last summer. Um, and then, and then again in December, and then especially tonight, um, I've loved the support from you all, and um, yeah, it's, uh, it wouldn't have been possible w- without without you all spending your hard earned money. So, a huge thank you from me, um, and uh, we did it. And the new, and the new up the cherries. Chris Billum Swift, thanks very much for speaking to Boxing News. Congratulations once again. I look forward to catching up with you soon. Thank you. Cheers, mate.